Well, the situation is the following. I was asked to finish on time and we have seven minutes for the Q&A. So I would suggest the following. I will gather questions to give the chance to each speaker to have one or two minutes, one or two minutes, not more please, to try to, to pick up the question they're, they're privileged. So I start with uh, Renaud and uh, Jean-Claude after that. Uh, obviously, be brief in your question, but I know that Renaud is expert oui, on that. Oui, c'est uh, Renaud Girard, je suis le chroniqueur international du Figaro. Just a question, uh, Monsieur Nicolet. Uh, après la Deuxième Guerre mondiale, la France, et même d'autres pays européens, ont été capables de suivre les Américains dans l'industrie moderne de l'époque, qui était l'aéronautique. On avait les avions égaux aux Américains. Là, visiblement, Est-ce que euh, on abandonne quoi On est trop en retard. Les autres euh, investissent euh, euh, trop par rapport à nous, ont trop de capacité. Est-ce qu'on est, on est, est-ce que nous, Français ou Européens, on a vraiment perdu cette euh, cette bataille où on va arriver euh, à faire comme on a fait des euh, des Mirage, des, des Mirage 3 et des, des Airbus à revenir dans la course ou c'est fini Jean-Claude and Je prends ensuite la question de Joseph. Il y a une question au milieu aussi. Oh, yeah. yeah, just uh, going back to Mayor and the comment he made about the Snowden story. Uh, in the United States, we believe that we have the right to have our communication to be protected from government. And uh, the debate uh, at the occasion of the Snowden story was whether we can listen to anybody or the government can listen to anybody, can listen to American citizen, which creates even more problem. And if you listen to citizen, at least, and particularly for American citizen, you should have a judge reviewing the process and the warrant to be established. Joseph, and ensuite au premier round, madame. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, my question goes immediately to Jean-Louis uh, Gerigorin. Jean-Louis, I would like to ask you after your presentation, you said that we are witnessing, we are going through a new kind of war. And the more digitalized you are, the more vulnerable. My question is very concise and brief. What are, and it's, uh, I'm following John Sawyer's, the intervention of John Sawyer's in the previous panel. What are the means and the tools for a democracy in order to prevent cyber attack? Be, I mean, beyond and without infringing on the state of law. Thank you very much. So I will go for the last question, Madam. Yeah, that was really my question too, because uh, uh, w when we started speaking about cyber attacks and all that, and you hear about ransom, you hear about all kinds of things, but when it goes to the core of democracy, and that I was really uh, terrified when I was watching the, the uh, Robert Mueller's uh, audition when he was saying right now we are under a threat of uh, uh, the uh, next elections, next election being attacked after what happened in uh, 2016 and he, they felt so powerless so you say uh, how can we, so it's exactly the same question is there, is there a way to prevent it and my question is to uh, Mr. Maishetrick because they look, they seem to have a specific solution to that, and to Jean-Louis Gergora. Thank you. So I return now to the, to the panelists. Uh, Mayor, would you like to go first? Yeah, okay. For a couple uh, of minutes? Sure. I think that uh, in order to prevent, to the lady, in order to prevent what you were suggesting, Wait. country what? have to be very aware to the situation and protect its own people. That's what we're do, try, doing in Israel. Not only for the government, we do it also for private companies. So in, we do it for private companies. For example, if we want to prevent attacks against our banks, we have the ability really to prevent it because we prepare ourselves from advance not to allow possibility of attacks banks in Israel. So we have to be prepared to prepare. You, when you make elections in the United States, of course you can manipulate it very easily today. And that's what we did in the last elections, according to the press. So the United States have to prepare its own system to not be open to attacks. That could be in your car, in airplanes, everywhere. As a matter of fact, you can arrive everywhere and ruin everything from far away, unless you put making protections. The protection is the other side of the cyber attacks. You have to be protected very strongly. Thank you. Patrick. 
Uh, yeah, very briefly, I think some battles are lost. Yes, the, the, the public cloud one is gone. Uh, there is too much money uh, into it and uh, we don't have the market. Uh, the, this is gone. Uh, but the technology is evolving, so there are new battleground, uh, and I, I'll be brief. So I think the first one is data. Uh, we are not paying enough attention about how we want to manage data. We have a response, we heard it this morning, protect the citizen. Yeah, but uh, the, there is the source of value. It's not value in itself, this is a source of value. We, we should have a better plan, because if we don't have it, uh, then there is a second aspect where we can invest and win uh, market share. It's uh, software and in particular artificial intelligence, but without trusted data, it's very difficult just to have the engine. Uh, to, uh, you must have something to extract value from. And then on the infrastructure part, we alluded to rapidly this morning, uh, there is uh, the emergence of uh, edge computing. Uh, edge computing is linked to the deployment of sensors everywhere, so meaning there will be a distribution of intelligence there and, and uh, with uh, the new wireless technology called 5G that brings two things. Uh, first, the virtualization layer, and then the ability to manage uh, seamlessly all your networks. And I think here we have the opportunities uh, to regain uh, some, some position. But uh, the thing we've been discussing, it's, uh, it's, it's gone now. Just leave with it. Thank you, Jean-Louis. Just, I think that uh, the worst uh, is the worst is ahead. And I'm not convinced at all that artificial intelligence and these new tools will be, will more, will help more the defense than the aggression. I think that the aggressors will benefit more from artificial intelligence, especially to disguise themselves. Concerning your question, Renaud, and the uh, question of Joseph, we need to, de to do far more. For the time being, if we look at the products in cybersecurity, both for industry, for governments, they are not French. We are in a situation where the French Air Force would be entirely made with uh, uh, foreign airplanes. The tools, the main tools, are either Israeli or American. So, the, and so this is a ge general challenge for Europe. And we have to build an ecosystem between startup and large companies that we have failed to do so until now. And second, we need to be far better to have what I call reactive defense. It means when we are attacked, when our companies, our private companies, are attacked by state actors, you know, there is an imbalance, you know. And we need to have a better protection from the state, a better interaction with the state, or several states, for the time being, the Europeans should work together, especially for threat intelligence. Because if we don't know who attacks us, if we have a not evidence of who attacks us, we, in fact, we have already lost, you know. Pure protection is not enough. We need a reactive defense and at the French level, but also at the European level. Thank you. May I? Just one two sentence. Words. Since we're speaking about artificial intelligence, which is the future of computing, there is a very famous people like Bill Gates, Stephen Hawking, which says that they look at artificial intelligence as a danger to the existence of the human being. Bon, je crois que tout le monde aura apprécié la tonalité optimiste de ce, cette session. Et donc, c'est le moment de remercier nos panélistes. <rire>